The next speaker I'm happy to introduce is uh, Tristan Nito. He is the Chief Product Officer of Cozy Cloud, an open source cloud platform. And he's talking about, this time is personal, reinventing the cloud for a post-Snowden era. He's talking about what's going on in the internet. And he knows he, what he's talking about because he's the founder and former president of Mozilla Europe. Please welcome Christian Nito. Hi, everyone. The slides are supposed to come up s real soon now. Yes? All right. So yes, I, I, don't have, I don't wear my costume today, and I'm sorry about that, but I'm actually a C-3PO from the Star Wars uh, movies because I'm Cozy Cloud Chief Product Officer. That's C-3PO. Um, we, um, I want to talk very briefly about the good, good old days of the uh, personal computing. Um, as you can see from my gray hair, I, I was uh, a teenager when I uh, had the, the f my first computer. It was, uh, it was fantastic. It was uh, exciting. Um, it was hardware that I own. There was no software shipping with it. I had to write my own software. And of course, because I wrote the software, I knew what the data was produced and how it was stored and where it would go. Basically nowhere, because I was not connected to the internet. I was in complete control of that. And that was fantastic. Um, uh, Steve Jobs had a great quote about personal computing. He, call, he called it a bicycle for the mind. And I think it was exactly that. It was my brain, but with a bicycle. It was a lot better. And then a lot of things have changed since then. Uh, we went from personal computing to cloud computing. And we, we've got the internet, so we had um, email, we had the web, we had uh, Wi-Fi, all these wireless technologies were, you know, really changed the world. Of course, the internet. Something very interesting came along that was software as a service. I mean, basically, I would just type something in my computer and it would take me to a web page and I would start using software that was not installed locally. And then when I closed the, closed the window, it would, the, the software was gone. And of course, we had the smartphones, we had the tablets, and all of this was paid by targeted advertising, um, which is basically we have software on demand for free because the data enables targeted advertising. So I have a, a quick question. I will ask everyone to raise your, head, your hand if you have a Facebook account. Do you have a Facebook account? All right, okay. So keep your hand in the air, please. And you will um, lower uh, your uh, hand if you have sent a check to Facebook recently. No, no, have you, have you checked, have you sent, those who have sent a check to Facebook recently, lower your hand. Okay, basically no one has sent a check to Facebook recently, right? because nobody's paying for it. How, do, how much, so you can lower your hands now, thank you, for this quick experiment. So basically, we get a service for free because we don't send money to Facebook. So how do we pay? We pay like this. We pay just like pigs in a farm, right? These pigs are very happy customers. They are fed for free, they have a house for free, and they will end up in sausages very soon, right? This is exactly us when we're using Facebook. We are the pigs. If you don't pay for, the f for this commercial service, you are not the client. You are the product which is being sold to the actual client. Who's the client? The client is the guy who pays for the service. Who pays Facebook? None of us. The advertiser pay for Facebook. So we are not customers, we're pigs. Just, just think about it, right? So. Our data, which is what pays for the service, we are just like the pigs that pay with their fat, we pay with our data. And the data is stored in the cloud. And compare this to the uh, personal computing model we had at the beginning. We had the data, we had to write the software, we had control over everything. Now we've lost control over the software, we've lost control on the hardware, we don't even know. Do you know where your data is stored on the planet? No, of course you don't. It's somewhere in the cloud. 
The cloud is a beautiful name, fluffy, nice, comfortable, good-looking name to just basically say it's someone else's computer, right? So you're running someone else's software on someone else's computer, and it's your data there, and you have no idea what's, what's happening to your data. And of course, because they own the data, they don't want to share it with anyone. They don't want you to leave their service and migrate your data to another place. Now, in June 2013, there was something very interesting which happened that was Edward Snowden revelation. Edward uh, Snowden is the whistleblower uh, who told us about everything about the NSA. Uh, actually, for me, Edward Snowden was a relief. Finally, officially, I was not a paranoid guy anymore. I was just a guy who knew before anyone else, right? Um, but for the other people, suddenly we realized that governments really spend a lot of money, an awful lot of money, to collect our data. And, of course, they could, you know, try to uh, listen to us in every day. They could, you know, uh, take our data, but they won't take us from us. They won't take the data from us. They will take the data from the big, large companies such as Facebook, Google, and such. Instead of targeting all of us, they just to have tar to target a handful of large commercial uh, cloud services. Basically, the centralization of the data into data centers over the world in the, in the, hand, in the hands of a few uh, companies basically empower the NSA to collect the data on a massive scale for uh, a, a cheap price. Basically, this makes economically feasible mass surveillance. And of course, you will tell me, uh, according to the words of uh, Joseph Goebbels, that you have nothing to hide. We all have something to hide. I do, for example, have a locker in my bathroom and I mean, I suppose that most of us do, right? It, it's not that I do illegal stuff when I'm in the restrooms, it's just that I wanna be alone, right? And I have curtains in my bedroom, and it's not that I do illegal stuff in my bedroom, right? Um, and I can give you details if you want. I have two kids, so I've done it twice at least, you know? Uh, and it's not illegal, but I do have curtains. Um, and then sometimes, you know, it happened to me recently when I switched to Mozilla uh, to uh, work for Cozy Cloud, I've sent resumes and I didn't want my boss to know. Well, none of this is illegal, so we need privacy. Here's an example of a prison in the model of the Panopticon. Basically, there is a, a warden in a, in a tower in the middle and inmates are around just by being observed, they have to change their behavior to make sure they're not getting into trouble. So if you think you are uh, seen, you have to comply with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the behavior. So I'm an optimist, and I don't want to give up on the internet. So instead, I want to invent the internet that we actually need. And I want to move what we've done from computing to personal computer, we well, want to do it in the cloud computing and move to personal cloud computing. And I've been thinking, and I, I'm writing a book on this topic, what should be cloud computing now? Now that we know the NSA, we know that the, uh, the GAFAs are uh, taking our data. And I have came with seven things. The first one is hardware I can control. We can have very inexpensive hardware that we can connect to the internet at home for less than 100 euros or 100 dollars. We can have free and open source software, and this is what we do at Cozy Cloud, uh, because open source software, because it's transparent, enables me and other people to see what's going on in the software. We don't have to use encryption because we cannot trust the network, because we know the NSA and also recently, uh, the French government has been passing uh, a bill for mass surveillance. The hard part may be number four, which is saying no to targeted advertising. 
Targeted advertising means that they collect your data to profile you and exchange your knowledge about you for cheap services. By the way, Facebook costs five euros a year per person. So you're giving away all of your data to Facebook in exchange of only five euros a year. That's not a good deal. Um, there are three more things. Uh, user experience, we will need to, buy, to build stuff that is actually good and better uh, than Google and Facebook and such. It will work, the different brands would have to work together and we would have to create uh, a killer feature that will get people excited and will make, will make them uh, excited to move to the personal computing, to personal cloud computing instead of staying with, uh, with the GAFAs. So uh, I'm working with Cozy Cloud and I won't I'll be very quick about it. So what we do is open source software. You can download it for free on a server, install it on your uh, home server, and you will be able to uh, check your email, store your contact details, uh, store your files and your photos um, from your own server and add application just like you do on your smartphone. It's basically personal cloud computing. It's cloud computing on your machine that runs at home that give you uh, access and control over your data because your data is at home. So now, what, what can you do? First, try to get rid of silos. The first step could be uh, stop using Gmail. That's one thing. Uh, get your own domain name. You know, in France, for, uh, on sites such as Gandhi.net, you can give your own domain name with email for only 12 euros a year, which is really a good deal when you think about it. Um, if you are um, a developer or a geek or someone who loves uh, high technology, you can try to use uh, Cozy and help us uh, make it better. You go to cozy.io and request an instance and we will, you will be part of the community and you will help us make it better so that it can reach uh, a, a global um, audience. And of course, if you're an advanced user, you can install Cozy at home and run it from your computer. That's, uh, that's uh, very useful also uh, for us. And if you're a developer, you can write an application that will run on Cozy Cloud and empower people that use Cozy Cloud to do more stuff. That's it. Thank you very much.